Doubles vendors and roti makers. Try our high quality unbleached bromate free all purpose and baker's flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg, and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Shaklisha Limited, 665 3336, or visit us at Warrenville, Canupia. Shaklisha Limited, quality you can trust. Good afternoon, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to Sea Results on IBN TV, as well as the IBN TV Facebook page and the Sea Results Facebook page. I am Sir Ijaz, and it's Monday, so that means we're going to be doing mathematics in the first hour, which will be followed by English language arts in the second hour with Miss Nyla. So as you know, on a Monday, we like to look at the performance of our students in our weekly quizzes. And if you're not familiar with that, if this is the first time you're joining us, uh, we do have a page on edmodo.com or alternatively you can download the edmodo app and you can join our web class where every week we post quizzes in english math and creative writing um, quizzes slash assignments that are based on the topics of the week and if you don't um, know how to subscribe you just either log into the website or download the app and there's a code to enter uh, j55aha and that will give you um, entry into our class of course that will be pending approval but most approvals are done within 24 hours so feel free to join our classroom and to get involved there are a lot of students on there who also help each other out uh, outside of the work that we assign to them when students have difficulties and so on in getting through any problem they post uh, pictures of it they type it out and they help each other so do feel free to join us on our Edmodo class so let's look at how our students performed for the quizzes that were posted uh, last week, that were due actually last week, Friday at 11.59 p.m. So on this new Edmodo class, we have 218 students currently active and about 38% of the parents are following them to see how they are progressing. And parents, if you join, remember, you will, be, you will receive updates in your email as well as notifications from the app if you're using the um, app platform. Uh, when quizzes are posted and when, th when things are due, right? And then you can also monitor uh, what's taking place in the group as well. So we had 111 students submitting the ELA task, which was uh, task three, grammar. And 100% of the students passed, which is very commendable, with an average score of 94%. 
All right, and we had 102 submissions in the mathematics, and these questions were based on simple interest, and they were taken from practice papers modeling the second section of the paper, right? So it's not the easiest type of simple interest questions, but they were still very much doable. Um, in contrast to last week when we had a, a bit of a meltdown in the, with the students in some of the uh, decimals, fractions, and percentage questions, right? 65% of the students passed and the average was 51%. But of course, there were many, many students who did way better than 51%, as we will see, because this week we have a number of students who were able to achieve full marks in both ELA and mathematics, and many more uh, came very close, right? Losing one mark in either one or both, right? So we have three new assignments posted. They were posted on Saturday, a math and English as well as a creative writing assignment. So you can, again, you can join our Edmodo class and get on board and submit those by the end of the week. You have until 11.59 p.m. on Friday, which will be the 3rd of July, all right? So let's look at those students who were able to do, you know, really well get 100% in both the topics. So we had Jamie Dorna getting 100% in both uh, grammar and math, Malise Jones, Margaret Joseph, Kyle Ram Kalawan, and Karima Ramsumer. Now a few of these names, like Jamie and Malise, for instance, I believe this would be their first time attaining 100 marks in both ELA and uh, mathematics. So you know, congratulations to you and to the rest of the students who got full marks. Uh, I am not sure about everyone, but I believe a couple of these are people that have been here on this list before. And then we have some more. We have Samir Rupan, Joseph Ross, Caitlin Sunarine, and Javon Stevens. So congrats again. We have some newcomers here and we have some regular uh, fixtures here in these 100% achievers, right? So well done, guys. Keep it up. Uh, I know, and as we like to emphasize, it's not just about, you know, attaining 100%, getting your name up here. That is an, an impetus. That is something that is meant to spur you on. But if you don't ever make it there, or if you only made it here once or twice, that is fine. What we are trying to do is to get you to compete with yourself, right? Not necessarily with anybody whose name is here. But if you uh, continually try to get 100% in both of them, your marks will improve over time because you'll be putting in that effort, right? So make sure that you are competing with yourself every time you get on any quiz, any assignment, any undertaking you take in life, as a matter of fact, always try to do better than you did the day before, right? And what about those students who were able to get very close to 100 in both? We have several such students. We had Aiden, uh, Vishala, Jahim, Ishan, Zaria, Andy and Amara. Andy Ann and Amara, incidentally, were the only two students to get full marks in both math and English last week. All right, so you see how it goes. One minute you're at the very top, next minute you go down a little. But, it, but the thing about it is to keep coming back, right? Uh, Samara, Faye, Sachin, Sydney, and Swarit. And many of these students here have been on the 100% list before and have been on the honorable mentions, but as you saw, this week, we've had brand new students in the 100% um, achievers and even some brand new names here on the honorable mentions. And what about in our creative writing? In the creative writing for this week, we had Yannick Williams getting full marks and Caitlin Sunarine getting very close to full marks in the creative writing. Now, we also had some students who got some 18s and 17s out of 20 and so on but not very many, and Miss Nyla will speak to you all about that uh, tomorrow in creative writing as well as on Thursday. Uh, this is actually, th these marks are about an expository writing piece that you all were assigned, and we have found that in the expository writing in particular, students tend to, you know, drop the ball a little bit, right? You have to remember that in the expository writing, it's factual writing. Uh, you have to take the emotions out of it. You can't be overly descriptive and using, you can't use figurative language and so on, right? You have to stick to the point. You have to report things factually in a kind of impartial way, all right? So again, we're going to continue working with you on this. And uh, perhaps the topic this time around was a little, little bit challenging. We don't know for certain, but we will get to the bottom of it as we explore that some more, right? But remember, you have to kind of separate and make a distinction between the two types of writing 
the narrative style writing and the expository writing because they are not the same, right? And of course, you don't know which one you will get when you go into that SEA examination room, but it will only be one. You won't have to choose between narrative and expository on the day. It can be all expository or all narrative. Therefore, that means you have to be prepared because you can't you know, get out of one or the other once it comes in the exam. And that exam is very much fast, fast approaching, right? It's coming up very soon. So that is our weekly report. And now we're going to get into mathematics. And as promised, uh, from this point onward in the program, right, we're just going to be doing, we're going to be trying to do practice papers from the start to the end, right, from question number 1 to 45. And we'll do it as quickly as we can. Uh, not rushing, of course, because we, we like to give, you know, little explanations at the end of the answers, right, to make sure that everyone uh, understands as best as we can help you to understand. So those numbers for our studios are going to be put on the screen now, and we are going to begin from question one of a practice paper. Of course, you know, you expect these first uh, questions to be a bit easier because it is section one, but, you know, we'll progress up the paper and hopefully get into more challenging stuff in the coming days. So let's look at the first question. We have to write the decimal number four, and we have an expanded notation here. 5 by 0 0.1 plus 4 by 100 plus 2 by 1 plus 8 by 0 0.01. So if you think you know the answer for this question, give us a call and let's hear what you have to say about it. Of course, even though this is the first question in the paper, some people still unfortunately make errors with this, right? So let's hear what our caller has to say. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Aidan. Hey, welcome, Aidan. How are you doing today? Good. So what, what is your answer for this question, Aidan? Okay, the answer is 401.58. 401.58. I mean, 402.58. All right, excellent. 402.58. All right, 0.58. Thank you so much, Aidan. You're welcome. All right, so as we said, of course, some, some explanation will follow. These are easier questions, so the explanations may not be very long. So we have here the expanded notation, and everything is mixed up, right? You'll notice we have a 0 0.1, a 100, a 1, a 0 0.01. And if you know that you might be confused by this, the best thing to do is to draw your place value um, chart, right? So you have your 100s, your 10s, your 1s. And then you have your tenths, and you have your hundredths here. And you can place the, uh, the, the digits into the right place. So we have 5 by 0 0.1, so that's 5 tenths. Right? Of course, we'll have a decimal point there. We have four hundredths, so we put the four. We have two ones, so we put two and not one. Right, so careful that mistake there that Aidan nearly made, and we have eight hundredths, so we're going to have an eight here, and because we have no tens, we are, we have to write a zero in that placeholder there, right, or in that column, sorry, of the place value table, and that's how you will get your answer of four hundred and two point five eight. Right, so very easy. And number two is also very easy, but it will get a little more challenging very soon. But still, we have to answer it, and maybe somebody might be happy to get an easy question. So let's see what this caller has to say. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to Series Results on IBN TV. Oh. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. And who am I speaking with? Riaz bin Mohammed. Hey, welcome, uh, Riaz. So, Riaz, what is your answer for this question? You may need a pencil um. to work it out. Okay, yeah, just give me a second so I can just work this out. All right, and everyone at home should be working this out along with Riaz, right? Thank you. Nice. Oh, yeah, um. All right.
right? I'm not sure what happened there with Riaz, but of course, um, as you can see here, I was working it out along with him. So we had 7,092 subtract 4,256. All right, so we had to start subtracting from here. We have two, take away six, so we had to regroup, take one from the uh, tens over here. So we're left with eight tens. We have now 12, take away six is six. Five from eight is three. Again, we cannot take two from zero, so we regroup again. And we have that six uh, thousands remaining, and we uh, add 100 there. So we are left with uh, 10 subtract 2, which is 8, and then 6 take away 4 is 2. And the answer is 2,836. And I'm very sure that all of you out there got this one correct. All right, so these were two very easy marks to obtain, two marks in the bag so far. And let's look at a slightly more challenging question now. Uh, good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hi, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. Oh, sorry about, uh, sorry, again. sorry about that. It's just uh, the phone has suddenly cut off on that. That's okay, Riaz. So you have a, another shot here now at a question. Mm -hmm. and we, have, we have this question here. We have to find the value of M. And m mm -hmm. over 6 is equal to 2 and 1 thirds take away 5 sixths. So what do you think is our strategy for this question? Okay, well, firstly, what I would do is convert the next number there into a, an improper fraction. Okay, so what would that be as an improper fraction? Okay, it will be plus 3 by 2 plus 1, so it will be 7 over 3. 7 over 3, very good. Minus. Yeah. Okay. And then, well, then I could, multiply, I could subtract, but before I subtract, I'll have to find the LCM of the number of the two fractions. All right. And what is the LCM? Which would be six. Six, right? No problem. Okay. So. On one end, it will be. Wait. All right, so Riaz again uh, with the call dropping there. Let's see if someone can step in for Riaz now. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hi, good afternoon, caller. Hi, good afternoon, and who am I speaking with? Aaron. Hey, welcome, Aaron. Aaron. So, Aaron, I, do you agree with what we've done so far in this question? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. All right, so what do we do next? Okay, six, 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 over, six, six over, six, or your game. Take your time, take your time. Take your time. Okay, six divided by three, right? Uh huh. Is two. Right. Is two. Two times seven is seven is fourteen. Right. Fourteen. So three into six is two, and two times seven is fourteen, right? What next? Six is six into six is one. Mhm. Mm and five and Five, five times one is five. Right. So, you have to, you have to minus it, uh -huh. minus it now. Right. So you go ahead and, and you'll get it. nine six, uh, over six. Right, nine over six, right? Yeah. So if all of this on the right hand side is equal to nine over six, right? And yeah. The left-hand side is m over 6. m over 6 is equal to 9 over 6. What do you think that means? What do you think that means It could for break m? down. Could it break down? Yes. All right. It could break down, but then we'll have a fraction with a different denominator than 6, right? Yeah. Oh, so it will be 1. I will get out and get 1 and 1 third. 1 and 1 third. All right. So you said 6 into 9 is 1. And then you put what? 3 over? 
three over five, six. Three over five, six. Yeah, and I break that. Three over six can break down. Three over six can break down. Enter what? It, it can be a half. It can be a half. So it, it is one and a half, right? But yeah. Okay, but I want to I want to explain something to you. Now, the reason that they have the left-hand side over 6 with a, with a letter here, and they want us to find the value of this letter, right? Yeah. So that means we have to make our right-hand side into a fraction with 6 as the denominator. And we've already done that, right? Yeah. We have 9 over 6. So if we compare the two, the denominators are the same. 6 is equal to 6, not so? Yeah. So therefore, what would this M have to be to be the same as the right-hand side? One and a half. Okay, so... Times. So you just, what you're doing here now is you're comparing the numerators. So because the denominator is 6 and 6, they are both the same, right? Yeah. Therefore, the numerators, in order for them to be equal, the numerators must also be the same. So yeah. if this side is 9... Then what should the opposite side be? It should also be 9, right? That is, that is what the question is trying to get you to, to do. To state what value m would be such that m over 6 is the same as the right-hand side when you work it out. When you worked it out, you got 9 over 6, right? Yeah. All right. And you are right. 9 over 6 is 1 and a half. But that is not quite what the question is asking you, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, all right. So, we'll forgive Aaron there. Um, you know, this is a bit, you know, algebraic, algebra for more, a little more advanced. But um, we, can, we can understand. We can use our, our powers of reasoning here and try to see what it is taking place, right? So, we have... Uh, let me just clear it and do it one more time. I know many students would probably be a little confused like Aaron, right? So remember, this is taken from a, a, a practice paper. Don't be upset with me, right? But anything can happen in the exam. So let's see how we can work our way around it. So we are told that something divided by 6, m over 6, which is a fraction, is equal to 2 and 1 thirds subtract 5 over 6. We want to find the value of m, right? We don't want to work out the answer to this side necessarily, right? It's not about a, a simple subtraction, right? It's more than that. We want to get a comparison going here, right? So we first convert that mixed number into a improper fraction or an improper fraction, and that is 7 thirds, right? We multiply the whole number by the denominator, add it to the numerator, and then we, sub we can subtract now only if our denominators are the same. One denominator is 3 and one is 6. So we can draw that long uh, uh, div dividing line there. Or we can just uh, multiply the 7 thirds by 2 in the numerator and the denominator in order to achieve uh, two fractions with the same denominator, right? We can also do that, remember working out our equivalent fractions either way is fine and of course you can reference all of our videos on our youtube channel if you are in doubt about any of these topics we've covered it already in a, in a lot of detail right so now we can subtract because we have the same denominator and we are left with nine over six right so if this entire problem was just two-thirds Sorry, 2 and 1 thirds, subtract 5, 6, ignoring this whole thing here. If this, was on this, if this was our problem, to calculate this, 2 and 1 thirds, subtract 5 over 6, right? We would have done all of that and then done as Aaron just told us and converted this improper fraction into a mixed number and gotten 1 and 3 over 6, which is the same as one and a half, right? But that is not quite what this question wants us to do. It wants us to find the value of m. So we've done all the hard work now of uh, working out the right-hand side of this equation in a manner that we have something over 6. 
And once we have something over 6 there, we can compare the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Good? So our left-hand side says m over 6 is equal to all of this. We, we worked all of that down to 9 over 6. And it's only because both of them have the same uh, denominator here we can make a straight comparison and see you know the 6 is equal to 6 right so that's that's a check so therefore what must this m be in order for the left hand side to be the same as the right hand side it must also be a 9 right so therefore the value of m is equal to 9 so I hope everyone out there uh, understood that explanation if you didn't remember you can rewatch this as many times as you like all right, it's, it's a comparison here. We're comparing the both sides, and that gives us our answer of 9. Good? So, all right. So here we are coming back down now into maybe a, a slightly easier question. I see I have a caller on the line. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hi, caller. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Nikolai. Hey, welcome, Nikolai. How are you doing today? I'm great. <laughs> so, what, what, can you read this question for our audience, please? Write the largest number between 5,000 and 8,000 that can be formed using the digits 1, 8, 5, and 6. All right. So, what are your thoughts here, Nikolai? Well, since it's between 5,000 and 8,000, yes. it can't be, it, the first number cannot be 8. Excellent. The first number cannot be 8. Well done. So, and it cannot, and it cannot be 1. All right. As 1, it will be the 1,000, and it will be lower than 5,000. Very good. And it will have to be between 5 and 6, with, and 6 is the highest, so you start off with 6. Very good. And then you go 8, then yeah. 5, then 1. 8, then 5, then 1. Thank you so much, Nikolai. Yeah. All right. So Nikolai explained it very wonderfully there. I have nothing more to add to that, right? We can't use the 8 because if the first digit is an 8, you add anything on beyond the 8,000, you will be above 8,000, right? It can't, be, it can't begin with a 1 because then you'd automatically be below 5,000 because you'll have 1,000 and something. Very good, Nikolai. And now we want to get the largest digit. So we can either start with a 5 or a 6. Of course, we're going to start um, the largest number. So of course, we're going to start with a 6 because it's more than 5. So we have the highest possible value here in our uh, thousands, right? Within the limitations, of course. Then we use the 8, the 5, and the 1, and we end up with the largest possible number between 5,000 and 8,000 given those four digits to choose from. So here we have another question and I'm going to take a caller to assist me with this one. All right, seems to have lost that caller. So we have, um, we want to know which of these four items here are equivalent, right? Do I have a caller on the line? Good afternoon caller, welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, and who am I speaking with? Aidan again. Hey, welcome back, Aidan. So, Aidan, what are your thoughts here for this question? Okay, um... Another question. Um, I'm going to do a quarter to a quarter. Um, the answer, well, the, um, so you'll take a change, everything to percentage. Everything to percentage? Yeah. All right, let's go with that. So what is 0 0.65 as a percentage? 65%. Okay. The 80% is already a percentage, right? Yeah. What about 11 over 20? 55%. 55? Is that what yeah. you said? All right, 55%. And the last one, 4 fifths is what as a percentage? 80. 80%, right? Yeah. So therefore, which two would be equivalent? Um, Four-fifths and 80%. Four-fifths and 80%, right? Yeah. All right, very good. Thank you so much, Aidan. Welcome. All right, so Aidan chose to convert all of them into percentages 
to the turban, right? Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you so much, Aidan. Welcome. All right. So Aidan chose to convert all of them into percentages to determine which are uh, the equivalent fractions here. All right. So we actually have here decimal fractions, percentages, and common fractions, right? So we converted all of them into percentages. Of course, 0 0.65 is 65 hundredths, right? So with 65 over 100, which is the same as 65%. 80% is 80%. 11 over 20, you'll say 20 into 100 is 5. 11 by 5 is 55. And then 4 fifths, 5 into 100 is 20. And 4 by 20 is 80%. So therefore, 80% and 4 fifths are equivalent as Aidan just told us. So we have here now a very interesting question, and I'll let the caller read the question to us. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. It's Aaron again. Hey, welcome back, Aaron. Okay, we seem to have lost Aaron there. Um, yes. Good afternoon, caller. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Good afternoon, Paula. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Who am I speaking with? Hi. All right. So, callers, remember, you have to mute the volume on your television when you're calling us and listen to us on the phone, please. And, uh, of course, you can rewatch the video on Facebook or YouTube afterwards, and you will hear yourself participating, right? Um, so, don't worry about that element of it. Just mute the television and listen on the phone and participate with us. So do I have another caller on the line? Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Caller, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Paula. Are you are you on the line? Yeah. Are you there? Who am I speaking yeah. with? Aaron again. Right, Aaron. Welcome back, Aaron. So sorry about losing that call just now. So what can you read this question for us, Aaron? Okay. In a game of dots points are given for hitting various areas on a board. Yes. How many times did the player hit? the three points area all right so let's look at our table here now on that first row we have the number of hits in the first column right we're yeah. going across now on the row so seven hits okay okay first you have to add the two you have to add 14 and 20. right and you what is that you get 34. good you and you have to take away 64 and 34, you'll get 30. All right. So far, so good. So we have 30 points here. Is that what you mean, right? Yeah. All right. You gotta divide by 3. And divide by 3, and that would give me what? That will give you 10. 10. So how many times did the player hit the three-point area? 10. 10 times, right? Yeah. Wonderfully done, Aaron. All right, so here we have a little chart uh, where we are scoring the points in a game of darts. And you have the number of hits, the area on the board hit. Uh, the area on the board that is hit will give us the point value. And we have the total points. So as you can see, we're just multiplying the hits by the points to get total points, depending on the area, right? So 7 twos are 14, 5 fours are 20. And we want to know um, how many points... Uh, in total, we got for the three-point area. So as Aaron just said, we have to add the total points that, were, that we got in the two- and four-point area, subtracted from the total, which we have here. So we got 34 from 64, gave us a remainder of 30, right? So we have 30 uh, points in total scored in the three-point area. So how many times would we have hit the three-point area, or this player hit the three-point area? You divide uh, 30 by 3, and we get 10 hits, right? Pretty straightforward. But of course, sometimes the graphics on the tables can be a bit intimidating to the students. All right? 
So we are at the midway point there. We're going to take about a two-minute break, and we will return with more questions. Remember, we're going through from start to finish, right? So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Good afternoon, assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to Sea Results on IBN TV as well as the IBN TV Facebook page and the Sea Results Facebook page. So we are working here on a practice paper. Uh, we got through six questions so far with the, with the participation of our callers, and we'd like to continue right where we left off before the break. We're at number seven, and here is our question. One-fifth of a number is 30. How much would 70% of the same number be? All right, so those numbers are there on the screen for you. If you believe you can assist us with this question, please give us a call. And let's see if you are on the right track, right? And of course, our viewers at home, you should have your pen and paper working along with us. This is all practice for the exam, of course, and for our quiz that will be posted on the weekend. Remember, our quizzes always mirror the content that we did on the show during the week, right? So again, one-fifth of a number is 30. How much would 70% of the same number be? I have a caller. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello, Mommy. Hello, Hi, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi, and who am I speaking with? Andy Ann. Hey, welcome, Andy Ann. How are you doing? Good. Okay, so what are your thoughts here, Andy Ann? One fifth of a number is 30, right? So the whole number will be 5 fifths. So you multiply 30 by 5. Okay. So 30 multiplied by 5. Or in and it'll words, get 150. Right. So we multiply by the reciprocal there, right? Mm-hmm. Great. And what next? And it's told you that how much is 
70% of the same number. Of yes. the same number B. So you find out how much is 70 percent, which is 70 over 100 multiplied by 150 over 1. Right. And you uh, cross out the zero from the 100, cross out one zero from, cross out one zero from 70, and you'll get 15 by 7. Yes. And 15 by 7 is 105. 105. Five. All right. Well done, Andy, and that is absolutely right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Welcome. All right, guys, so that's Andy Ann, a student that joined us, um, you know, more relatively recently than a lot of our students and has been doing exceptionally well, right? So continue the good work, Andy Ann. And of course, we'd like to see all of our students excelling. That's what we love to see. That's what we are all about. So we have another question here, and we're going to let our caller read it for us. So good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, good afternoon, and who am I speaking with? Michaela White. Hey, welcome, Michaela. How are you doing today? Good. So, can you read this question for us, please? A case can hold 24 bottles. Then, Devont De collected 304 bottles and filled them in cases. How many more bottles could he, would he need to fill the last case? All right. So, what are your thoughts here, Michaela? Well, I would think that he needs to divide 304 by 24. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a chance to do that, right? Yes. Okay. And of course, viewers at home, you should be doing this as well. I got 12, sir. 12, and is that a flat 12 or was there a remainder? There is a remainder. What is the remainder? Give me a check and to look it up. All right. So I got a remainder here of 16. Can you see your screen right now? Yes. All right. So 24 into 30 is 1. Subtract yes. 24 from 30, you get 6. You bring the 4 yes. down. 24 yes. into 64, 2 times, right? Yes. So you'll get 2 by 24 is 48. And 64 subtract 48 is 16. Yes. All right, so our remainder there is 16. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have 12 full cases of 24 bottles, right? Yes. And we have a remainder of 16. So we'd like to know how many more bottles Devonte would need to fill the last case. How would, we, how would we work that out? 24 take away 16. Right, 24 take away 16. And that would be 8. That would be eight, right? Okay, so that is the eight you were mentioning just now? Yes. All right, so the remainder is, oh, sorry, the, the difference to make up the last case is eight bottles, right? Yes. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. All right, so here we have a situation where we have a case holding 24 bottles and we have someone, Devonte, who collected 304 bottles he filled them in cases. We want to know how many more bottles he would need to fill the last case. So that's as a hint that we have to divide. We divide and we got a remainder of 16, right? Uh, 12, actually, with a remainder of 16. That means he was able to fill 12 full cases and he was left 
what, well, with 16 bottles in the last case, right? The case can hold 24. So we just simply have to subtract that 16 from the 24 to know that we need eight more bottles to fill the final case. All right, so that's correct, Michaela. And here now we have a VAT question. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to let the caller read the question. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Yeah, I'm going to, it's Aaron again. Hey, welcome back, Aaron. So, Aaron, what are your thoughts for this question here? Well, actually, you know fat. what? You need to read the question for us, please. Okay, fat of 12.5% is charged on a, an item regularly priced at $240. Right. How much fat would someone pay if the bought three of these items? Right, if they bought three of these and a half is equal to one eighth. Right. Twelve and a half percent is the same as one eighth. Very good. It'll be thirty. It'll be thirty? Yeah. But how many how many of the items did they buy? Oh thirty multiplied by three right. is ninety. So because they bought three items, the bat will be three times that, right? Yeah. So we get three multiplied by 30, which is equal to $90. Good? Yeah. All right, Aaron. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so again, remember this is how this is the, these are the types the types of things that cause us to lose marks in exams, right? Of course, we come in the effort. Yes, the VAT on one item was uh, thirty dollars, as we've told you before. Try to memorize. Try to remember that twelve and a half percent is the same as one eight. Twenty five percent is a quarter. Twelve and a half percent is half of twenty five. Half of a quarter is one eight. Right? You can try to memorize it like that. Um, or a, a way to get back to that one eight if you are ever unsure. So we have three of these items being purchased, and we want to know the VAT if they bought three of the items, not one. Right? So we find one eighth of 240, which is 30, and we multiply that by three, and we'll get a total of $90 in VAT. Right? So take note of that, people. And let's look at another question here. I'm going to let the caller read this one. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, caller. This is Aidan. Hey, welcome back, Aidan. So, Aidan, can you read this question for our audience, please? Are you there, Aidan? All right, I don't know if we've lost Aidan there. So maybe we should try another if we have one, right? And of course, you all at home, you should be reading the question and working it out with us, before us, so that you can compare your answer at the end, right? Do I have another caller on the line? Good yeah, this is Aidan again. Okay, Aidan. So Aidan, can, can you read the question for us, please? Yes. Um, at a bank, a customer would do $3,280. Yes. The customer received the money in only fifty dollars, twenty dollars, and ten and ten dollar bills. What is the maximum number of fifty dollar bills that the customer could have received? Right. So, what are you going to do with this question now? Ah, uh, okay. Yes, so we have to apply our, our logic here, our critical thinking skills to this question. Yeah. So as soon as you have an idea, you let us know what is, your, what is the first thing that is coming to your mind. So 50. Uh-huh. You, you need to find like, the maximum number of 20 and $10 bills first and that, that you could use. All right. And what do you think that would be? You could use... All 
All right, so just let me help you out a little bit here, right? Yes. Is 3,280 um, totally divisible by 50? Um, Do you think? No, because it's not. A, because if you, if you divide it... Um, Go ahead. Well, yeah, it's yeah, divisible, right? 15. But no. No, it is not exactly divisible by 50. If it was, it would end in a 50 or in two zeros, right? Yeah. Okay. So what what is the last number before 3280 that 32 that 50 could go into? Um Think about it. The last number before 3280 that 50 could go exactly into. Okay. So in other words, the last number ending in a 50 or two zeros that, that would be before 3280. Um. Three thousand two hundred and fifty. Excellent. Three thousand two hundred and fifty. Right. Yeah. Now let's see. You said you have to figure out what is the maximum number of twenty and ten dollar bills you can use, right? Yeah. Now remember, we have to use at least one twenty and at least one ten, right? Yeah. Because the customer received the money only in these figures, right? Yeah. So if we subtract that thirty-two fifty that you just called there for me. What would be the difference here? From the thirty to eighty. Sorry? Yeah, from ah, the thirty to um, eighty. Thirty dollars. Yeah. Thirty dollars, right? Yeah. Um, now can we make up thirty dollars with a twenty and a ten? Yes, you could use one each. One each, right? Yeah. So you use one twenty and you use one ten. So good. So we are so we so we satisfy the requirement here now to use twenties and tens as well as fifties, right? Yeah. So now we ha what are we left with when we remove that thirty? We have thirty-two fifty, right? Yeah. So now we can divide thirty-two fifty by fifty. Right. So you go ahead and do that for me. Sixty-five. Thirty-two fifty divided by fifty is sixty-five. Yeah. All right, let's just double check. And you are correct. So the maximum number of $50 bills that the customer could have received is? 65. 65 bills, right? Yes. All right, Aidan, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. So, so we have that requirement here, people, um, that we must use 50s, 20s, and 10s. So we want to know the maximum number of $50 bills that the customer could have received. Right, of course, you could have just divided 3280 by um, 50, okay, and then you would have also gotten 65 with a remainder, right? Um, but in this, in this way, we eliminate uh, the need for dividing with the remainder, right? The division becomes much easier, and we can also see if we push that upper limit with the, the, the last number that ends in a 50 or two zeros. Um, if the remainder there, if the difference can actually be split into uh, such a fashion that we can use the 20 and $10 bills, right? So the highest uh, multiple of 50 that is less than 3280 is uh, $3,250. That means we have a difference of $30 there to make up. And of course, we can use one twenty and one ten dollars bill to do that. And now we divide the 3250 by the 50 to see the maximum number of $50 bills that the customer could have received, right? And we got 65 bills. So that is the answer there. And here we have, we are now out of number now and into measurement, right? It's a while since we've done some measurement questions. So let's see how, how much you remember, right? So those are the numbers there on the screen. And this is our question. And I see I have a caller, so I'll let the caller read it. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Good afternoon, caller. All right. So
So which of the units below can be used to measure the amount of water that a bucket can hold? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Who am I speaking with? Samir. Hey, welcome, Samir. Is this Samir Rupan? Yes. All right. Yes. Congratulations on getting 100 marks in both ELA and math this week, right? Yes. All right. And thanks for always participating in our Edmodo class. So can you read this question here for our audience? Yes, sir. Okay. Which, which of the units below can be used to measure the amount of water that a bucket can hold? All right. So gram, mm -hmm. cubic grams, liters, square kilometers. Right. So grams, cubic meters, liters, and square kilometers. Which do you think is the one that is most ideal to measure a bucket of water? Liters. Liters, right? Now, before yes. you go, Samuel, uh, what other unit here is a unit of volume? Cubic meters. Right, cubic meters. And what is grams? Grams is a, a measure of what? Weight. Right, weight or mass, right? Yes. Right, and what about square kilometers? Distance. Okay, square kilometers will actually be a measure of area, right? Yes, sir. All right, so therefore that would automatically eliminate those two, and we are left with two units of volume here, and liters is more suited to the bucket, right? Yes, sir. All right, Samir, thank you so much for your call. Welcome. All right, so Samir there, guys, absolutely correct with this question, and again, uh, the reason I had him stay on to answer those questions for me is that sometimes, you know, the, the answer may not strike you right away, but you can use what we call the process of elimination, right? So we have four choices here, and if we want to know, um, the measure the amount of water that a bucket can hold, right? Grams as a unit of mass, we will not measure uh, the amount of liquid in a vessel or a container by, by grams, right? So that's mass weight, we will not, we will not do that. Um, we have cubic meters, which is a measure of volume slash capacity, and we have liters, which is another, so those are two options, all right? And then we have square kilometers, right? Kilometers by itself is a measure of distance, but square kilometers is a measure of area, right? And the cubic meters, um, you know, the, the base unit there, one cubic meter will be a cube of uh, one meter by one meter by one meter, which will be, you know, a lot to measure in terms of the size of a bucket, right? Liters, of course, would be more suited to that. Good? So that is why liters is the answer for this question. And here we have uh, another question to do with, with time. All right. So let's see what our caller has to say. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Travel Brown. Hey, welcome, Travel. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? Not too bad. So, can you read this question here for our audience? Sure. Lazis yes. was given two weeks vacation mm -hmm. starting on Tuesday, the 21st of August. Right. Right the date of the last day of the vacation. All right. So, what are your thoughts here, uh, Travel? I will, I know that uh, one week is, is seven days. Right. So I will multiply seven by two. That will give me 14. Right. Then I'll add 14 by 21. Okay. And that will give me 35. All right. Now, now remember, we have to write the date, right? Yes. Okay. So two. is there a 35th day in any month? No, but. You, you can continue by 31st, yeah. then uh, the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd, and the 4th. And the 4th? Yes. All right. So let me just show you something that I've drawn up here, right? So the 1st day of the holiday is, or the vacation is on Tuesday, the 21st of August, right? So the 1st day of the holiday is on the vacation is on the 21st, right? Yes. All right. So two weeks later, as we can see in this little calendar I've drawn here would be the 4th of September as you said right but the question yes. wants to know what is the last day of the vacation 
And you told me that 14 days is two weeks, right? Yes. So therefore, our uh, worker here, Riaz, will be home for 14 days. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Because the day, the Tuesday, which is the first day of the vacation, you have to count that day as well, right? So yeah. therefore, the last day of the vacation would be the third of September, right? Mm -hmm. And then Riaz would go back out to work on the fourth of what? September. Got that? Mm. That's just because we are counting the first day of the vacation as a day. Otherwise, two weeks later is the 4th of um, September, right? But the question wants to know what is the last day of the vacation. Good? Yes. All right. So we write that date. We write, what is that? That is on Monday. Yes? Monday, mm. the 3rd yeah. of September. All right, Chavel, thank you so much, and keep up the good work on the Admodo page. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, Monday, the 3rd of September. All right, and again, you can refer to our calendar when you are re-watching this video and check out that solution. So, that is all the time that I have for today, but don't worry. Miss Nyla will be joining us um, in a couple of minutes with English Language Arts. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow in the creative writing session. All right, so take care, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys and welcome back to See Results. I'm Miss Naila and you are now joining me for English Language Arts. Good evening guys, um, I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for joining us as usual and for all the support and of course uh, to all the students who uh, visit our Edmodo class every week and take those quizzes. We really appreciate that and we uh, look forward to seeing your progress, you know, in a couple of weeks heading up towards that SA exam, right? Um, 
So we're going to continue with our SCA practice paper. And as you know, we have been doing those uh, section one and two, uh, looking at spelling. And when we come to spelling, we're looking at rules associated with spelling, you know, how to overcome um, those errors, those frequent errors. If you're not, uh, not such a good speller, right, we have some hints and tips for you on our YouTube channel from previous videos. Uh, take a minute or two, guys, um, you know, head towards our YouTube channel, subscribe to that, of course, and check out those videos. And then with punctuation, capitalization, you have to ensure that you know all of those rules and the punctuation marks, you know, that usually come for the SE exam. And then, of course, with the grammar section, there are so many rules, right, and that we looked at and that we continue to go over each time we uh, head towards this practice paper, we look at those rules associated with the errors and we go through them, right? For any additional help you may need, of course, you can use the resource videos. So let's start with section one, right? Looking at spelling. Um, I'm going to actually take a call and someone is going to help me to read this passage. Just remember, guys, uh, when you are calling, you have to lower the volume on your television set, mute it even, okay? Um, so we want someone to read this passage and then we're going to go line by line and look for the spelling error or identify the spelling error in each line and then you have to give me the correct spelling. Right, so while we are waiting on a call, I'm actually going to get started and maybe someone and actually do have a call on the lines, right? So let's take this call. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hi, afternoon. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Regan. Hi, Regan. So, uh, Regan, can you assist us by reading this passage for us? Sure, no problem. Okay. The natural environment is God's, is God's gift and you can just zoom in a little bit sure. on the, yeah. The natural environment is God's gift and provision for the care of his people. It provides healthy food, shelter, clothing, medicine, beauty products, clean air and clean air and many other benefits for humans to use. However, we must use it responsibly. Okay, great. So Regan, help us with number one. Okay. Okay, so the wrong word spelled there is natural. Right, and how should natural be spelled? N-A-T-U-R-E-L. Great job, Reagan. Thank you so much for calling. No problem, bye. Okay, bye, Reagan. All right, let's take another call to help us with number two. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hi, Miss. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Michaela White. Hi, Michaela. So, can you read line two for us and give us the incorrect spelling and then the correction? And provision for the care of for the care of his people. Right. The incorrect spelled word is provision. Right. And it is spelled like P R O V I S I A I O N. Okay, great job, Michaela. All right, thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, bye. Well, let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Aidan. Okay, Aidan. Uh, can you help us with number three? Number what? Number three. Okay. It provides healthy food, shelter, clothing. Healthy is spelled wrong. Right. And give me the correctly spelled. H-E-A-L-T-H-Y. Right. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Right. Um, let's move on. All right, and I'm going to hold on there for a call. And so far, what we are seeing here, just probably, you know, some, the mixing up of some letters, um, an E instead of an O, um, you know, missing a couple letters even. Even with spelling, remember, there are some rules like the I before E, and um, except after C, but then, of course, you have your exceptions. You have your hard C, your soft C, um, your hard G, the soft G sound. All of those um, are rules that you need to be reminded of. And as I remember any and as we come across um, any other rules here, I'm going to remind you guys, right? Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Andian. Hi, Andian. Can you assist me with number four? Yes, Miss. The okay. incorrect word is me medicine. And how should it be spelled? M E D I C I N E. Medicine. N S or N E S? M E D I C I N E S. Medicine. Thank you. You're welcome, Miss. Okay. Right. Let's move on to number five. Good evening. Welcome to see results. 
Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Kiran. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. Okay, can you help me with number five? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you zoom in a little, please? Sure. Can you see the line now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The incorrectly spelled word is benefit. Right. And it's B E. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is number five. Yes, number five. Okay. So it is benefits. I just need the correct spelling now. B E N E F I T S. Excellent job. Thank you so much for calling. Let's go to the next one. I'm um, sure. Why not? Okay, miss. The next one is responsibly. Right. And how should it be spelled? R E S P O N S I B L Y. Okay. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Okay. All right, guys. Let's just take a second and analyze our errors and corrections here. Right, so natural, so it's N A T U R A L. Instead, they had you know um, R U. So that's just mixing up of two letters there. Of course, you have to know the correct spelling in order to figure it out. Um, provision here, they have an A instead of an O. Um, healthy, so H E A, an A is missing. L T U, L T. Sorry, L T H Y, and then medicines. Right, um, that E there should be replaced by an I. Moving on to benefits, again, that I should be replaced by an E. And then responsibly, right, R-E-S-P-O-N-S-I-B-L-Y. So these here, um, we didn't really come across any specific rules with these spelling errors. Um, as with the SA exam, we don't know what you are going to be tested on or how are you going to be tested. So you have to ensure that, of course, you know the rules and then there are the words that you should know how to spell. Right, so if you see the word natural, for example, spelled as such, you know that's incorrect. Right, just a mix-up of letters or a letter is missing or that sound, right, it's probably how you pronounce um, a word, you misspell it as that. So, right, so you have to know if it's an O rather than A or vice versa. Right, so I do hope that all of you were able to get uh, 12 easy marks from this section. Let's move on to punctuation and capitalization. Again, I will ask another student to help me read and then we'll go on. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hello. Hi, good evening. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Um, see results? Hi, you are Hello? live on See Results. Oh, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Wa Alaikum As Salaam. Who am I speaking with? Riaz Mohammed. Okay, Riaz, um, can you assist us by reading this short passage? Um, yes, I'm sorry about that. It's just I normally usually speak to your operators with that. Okay, no problem. What is, yeah. what, is, what is erosion? It is the wearing away of... Okay, the, the, missing, punctu well, the missing punctuation is okay. a question mark. Okay, just now. I don't what? want the uh, correction as yet. I just want you to help me read the passage and then we'll go to number seven, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're reading the entire what passage. Is okay, um, you can just... Yes. We're starting back from what is erosion, okay? What is erosion? It is the wearing away of, uh, of the earth. It is the wearing away of the earth's surface. There are many factors, factors responsible for erosion. These include running water or sex. Running water, wind, and human activity. In some parts of the world, like China, Australia, and North America, erosion is a major problem. Okay, great. Let's go to the first line there. Yes. So go ahead and tell me what is missing. Okay. What is erosion? It is the wearing away of... Right. The error is right after erosion, before it, it's supposed to have a question mark. Okay, great job. Thank you so much for helping. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so okay, let's, enjoy. you too, enjoy the rest of your evening. Right, uh, let's take another call for number eight. Good evening, welcome to see results. 
Good afternoon. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Michaela White again. Okay, Michaela, um, go ahead with number eight. The Earth's surface, there are many there are many factors. The the error is supposed to have a co a apostrophe. Where? An apostrophe between S and H in Earth. Right, so or H and S, right? Yes. Okay, great job, Michaela. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. And of course, guys, you don't need to write over um, the word, but simply because there isn't sufficient space between these letters, I'm just inserting the apostrophe mark there for you to see. All right, good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. I'm Jaden. Okay, Jaden, help us with number nine. Okay. You're putting a colon after, include the chair, you're going to give a list. Great, but there are two errors here, and since you often like to answer two questions, there are two missing punctuation marks on this line. Can you identify the second one? You can probably read... Um, the fourth line there to assist you with that. Okay, ma'am. Come after water. Excellent job. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, number 10, good evening. Welcome to see results. Let's try this again. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, afternoon. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Reagan again. Okay, Reagan. Number 10. Sure. Wind and human activities. In some parts of the, so after activities, there's a full stop, which means the starting of a sentence, and it's I supposed to be in capital. Excellent, Regan. Thank you for calling. Miss, um, I would like to shout out, Riaz. Sure. Uh, Riaz, I'm missing you, and I want to come back to school so we could talk and think. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, bye. Okay, and I, do, I am sure Riaz feels the same way. Right yeah. now. Thank you so much. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Aaron. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Good. Okay, Aaron. Can you help me with number 11? Number 11 is an, a comma after world. After world? Yeah. All right. No, a, a capital N for north. All right. That's better. Capital N for north. Why is that? Because it's a name of a place. Excellent. Thank you, Aaron. All right, let's take a final call for number 12. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Jaden again. Okay, Jaden. Um, number 12. A full stop after problem. Okay. Thank you once again. Okay, miss. Okay, so... Miss, I could stay on the line to the next one. Um, actually... I'm going to take a couple minutes. I prefer if you call back, okay? Okay, ma'am. All right. All right. Um, so let's analyze this piece. What is erosion? It is the wearing away off, right? So we know that it's a question. So therefore, a question mark is missing. Also, another hint here would be simply looking at the other word, it, knowing that it starts the capital letter, and therefore, it's the beginning of a sentence. So before that, we must have a punctuation mark. And in this case... We have a question word or one of the W's here, which tells us it's a question, right? And we know that we have to use a question mark at the end of questions. The earth's surface, right? So I'm showing ownership here, so therefore we use the apostrophe, right? So earth's surface, there are many factors responsible for erosion. These include, so we, yes, uh, as the caller rightfully said, uh, we have a colon right before we have also list anything. So a colon was inserted here and... Then, running water, wind, and human activities. So as they go on to list, we know that we use commas between items or objects in a list. So water, comma, wind, and human activities. And then we look at the end of a sentence, uh, full stop after the word activity, so therefore we are starting a new sentence, So which means we have to use a capital letter. right? So capital I. So in some parts of the world, like China, Australia, and North America. So America, um, not because... 
Oh, not only is America a proper noun, North America as well, proper noun there. Erosion is a major problem. Full stop, right? Brings us to the end of a sentence or idea. And again, I do hope that you were able to get a quick and easy six marks here. Right, so let's move on to grammar. And I'm going to ask someone to help us read this uh, task, and then we're going to go line by line. All right, so I'm going to hold on a couple seconds there and see if I have a call on the line. I know Jaden was, you know, anticipating this, so let's see. Good evening, welcome to see results. Good evening. Welcome, and yes, we do have him on the line. So go ahead and read this uh, passage for us. Can you zoom in a little, please? Sure. Can you see now? Are you there, Jaden? Okay, I think we lost Jaden. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Aaron again. Hi, Aaron. So, Aaron, can you assist us by reading Aaron. this? Aaron. Aaron, sorry? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Aaron, can you assist us by reading this passage for us? Suraj works in a small IT com company. Right. He manages all the computers and cell phones in the company. Wherever there are problems, people often call Suraj for help. Okay, so I don't want you to give me the um, answers. I want you to read exactly what you are seeing, okay? Yes. Okay. Almost. You can just scroll, scroll down. Yes. We're just going to scroll along there for you. Guys, can we scroll along, please? All right, go ahead, Aidan. Okay. No, I'm still not seeing it. Okay, give it a second. Can you see the fourth line now? Um. And just be reminded, Aidan, to lower the volume on the television, okay? Okay, are you ready, Aidan? Uh, yeah, good. Okay. Almost none works get done when the computers aren't working good. Great. So help us with that first line there. What is our error? Um, we're just going to scroll back to the top. Just one moment. Right. Can you see the first line now? No. Okay. So in the meantime, everyone should be trying to identify the grammatical errors and of course give us the correction, okay? All right, Aidan, can you see it? Is it on yeah. the right? Go ahead with the first line. Raj works in a small IT company. Okay, great job, Aidan. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. All right, so it's A rather than an. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Good evening. Hi, welcome back. Please hang up and try well again. All right. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Okay, and we lost that call as well. All right, the numbers are there at the bottom of your screen, guys. Um, we do welcome new callers, so do try. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Okay, we lost that one as well. Good evening. Welcome to see results. All right, and I'm going to go ahead with number 14 until we have another call. All right, uh, he manages all the computers and cell, cell phones. And actually, I will wait on a call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Aidan. Okay, Aidan. Help us with number 14. Um. He manages all the computers and cell phone in the company. So what should it be there? Um, 
and, se and um, cells. Okay, so the error is cell, but what is your correction? Spell it for me. Um, cells. Okay, so spell it. S. Can you spell the entire word? S E L L S. S E L L S. Excellent. All right, don't go as yet. I want you to tell me how. We know it's cell phone, C E L L. So it's, it's C E L L? Yes. Okay, but my question to you is this a spelling task? No, grammatical error. Grammatical error, so I don't want you to be confused, right? So the, um, the error actually is cell, and the correction is cells, right? And we will get to that shortly, guys, and I will explain that to you. So don't worry about it, right? Um, but thank you, Aidan. Welcome. All right, uh, let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to Series Us. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, welcome. Is this Nicholas? Yes, it is. Okay, Nicholas, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you, Miss? I am great. Thank you for asking. Okay. So, help me number 15. Um, number 15, in the company, whenever there's problems, problems supposed to be... Problem, supposed to be problem, whenever there's a problem. All right, so let me read this for you, right? In the company, whenever there is problems, and you are saying they should actually be problem. problem. So read that line for me and let's see if it makes sense. Whenever there is problem. Right, so is that making sense? No. Right, so that's not the error there. Look at it again. Read the next line and that will also help you. Whenever so is the error? No. Will we say there is problems? Is that grammatically no, correct? No, there are. It's supposed to be are. Uh. Ah. Uh, you see it now, right? Yeah. All right, Nicholas, thank you for calling. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, uh, Hi, Nicholas. welcome. Who am I speaking yeah. with? Nicholas, thank you for calling. Hello. Yeah. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Tao. Can you repeat that for me, please? Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome. Hello, Mark. Hi, good evening. You are live on C results. Who am I speaking with? Okay, can you just lower the volume on the television, please, so I can hear you a little clearer? Okay. Yes, hello? Okay, great. Um, can you give me your name once again? Hi. Okay. Nice to have you with us. Uh, I want you to help me in number 16. Yeah. yeah. Called to call. Called is the error and it should actually be call. That is correct. Thank you for calling. All right, let's move on. Good evening. Welcome to C Results. Good evening. You are live on C Results. All right. Let's move on to number 17. Almost none work gets done when the computers. Right? So almost and your error here is actually none and it should in fact be no right almost no work gets done when the computers and this last um, question here or missing and we have a call on the line i'm going to take this call good evening welcome to series house hi good day hi welcome who am i speaking with dominique hi dominique how are you i'm good okay can you help me with number 18 Can you repeat that? I'm just going to read it for question. Yes, you can read it out loud, that's fine. Okay. Almost no almost no almost no will get done when the computers aren't working good. Almost no will get done when the computers aren't working good. Good will change to 
Can you repeat that? God will change. Right. To what? So good is the error there. And what should I change it to? Well. Well. Excellent, Dominique. Thank you for calling. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. I'm going to pause on the calls for a minute. And let's look closely at this grammar piece. Right. So Suraj works in an small IT company. Right. So it's not an. We know an is used before vowels or vowel sounds. Rather, it's the article a used before consonant letters. Right, and of course there are exceptions, but in this case we are using the article A. Suraj works in a small IT company. He manages all the computers and sells phones. So yes, we may be a little confused here because we are accustomed with the concept of cell phones, but they are trying to trick you. They are using homophones in this case, but you have to remember this is a grammar or grammatical error section and not spelling. Right, so do not confuse yourself uh, just, as, just as our caller uh, mistakenly did. And I understand why, but you have to remember which task you are on and try to avoid that error. Right, so it's cells, cells, the verb cell, but actually it's he, so it's a singular subject followed by a singular verb. Right, so cells, phones. Let's move on. In the company, whenever there are problems so you have to read the entire sentence that will help you whenever there are problems people often call so they're speaking now in present tense so called should actually be call Suraj for help almost none work gets done when the computers so almost no work gets done when the computers aren't working well the adverb well answers the question of how the computers are working right good in this case is an adjective we want to use the word well and again this task is worth 12 marks All right guys so i do hope that you were able to to get your full 12 marks we are going to move on to our comprehension passage so we are on to section two um section two you know can be a little tough i know some of you prefer section one but you have to master both and uh, remember you know your exam you have a limited time and you have quite a number of questions to complete. Uh, tips for when you are completing your comprehension and poetry passage are on our YouTube channel. Feel free to review those videos, guys, um, especially how to answer questions, you know, how to analyze a passage very carefully. So, for example, when we are reading this passage, we'll probably stop along the way if we come to a challenge in word. All right. Um, maybe we can even ask a student to help us read. That will be nice. And then to answer and give answers as we usually do. When we get to the poem, we will analyze the poem carefully. All right. So if you know that you have difficulty with um, comprehension and poetry, remember we did give um, you know some ways to help improve on your comprehension and poetry skills. All right. So I want you to bear that in mind. We are going to do um, a fiction passage actually named Ajax, right? So I did not write the title here, just for space of purpose, uh, space and purpose actually. So the name of it is Ajax, right? And I'm going to take a call. I want to ask someone to help me read this first slide. The numbers are there to the bottom of your screen, guys. If you would like to read for us, uh, that will be really appreciated, right? Um, so I'm going to hold on a couple of seconds and let's see if we have a call on the line to help us read. And uh, Good evening, welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, Kuala. Hi, good evening. Hi, welcome. Is it Jaden? No, this is Brandon. I am sorry, my apologies. So, it's Brandon, okay. um, can you help us read? Yes, miss. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Once the flood began to go down the river, and the little creeks that fed it dropped rapidly. Actually, I had Ajax for only two days when my father decided it would be safe to begin the check home. So we packed everything once again and started off home. I, ho I hold an Ajax on my knee and the other two dogs sitting jealously, jealous, I'll agree, at my feet. Benny on the seat between Lewis and me. It wasn't. It wasn't at all pleasant drive. There were only patches of dry road and all sorts of things were hidden in the watery holes. 
and pulled logs and washed away it. I I had my work cut out trying to hold on to all three dogs as we went bumping along. As we went bumping along. Go ahead. His, his ass grew stronger every day, and soon he could lap up his milk. Then his yellow eyes would narrow to slits of ecstasy as he drank. When he got a little larger and stronger on his legs, Algi long, longed to play with him. He would bowl, bowl the pup over and push him along with his nose while Ajax went, with, went on with frenzied, frenzied snappings and snarlings. Then Algi blinked at the rid- ridiculous pup seemed to shrug his big shoulders and probably gave up effort. When Ajax snapped at Benny, Benny snapped back at him, and then there were such squealings and yelpings of rage on both sides, and I had to separate them. Okay, great. Thank you so much for reading for us. You're welcome. Man. Okay, and I do hope you call back to help us answer some questions, but we do have to take a break, guys. Uh, when we come back, We'll probably reread the passage and then we'll answer some questions. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys and welcome back to Sea Results. I'm Miss Naila and you are rejoining me for English Language Arts today. So we are up to section 2 in our paper and just before the break, um, Brandon, one of our students, were asked, was asked to read the passage. However, we're going to ask someone else to reread it for us just because we had that break and I want the passage to be fresh in your minds. And then we're going to go to the question. So let's take a call. Good evening, welcome to Sea Results. Hi, Miss. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Michaela White. Hi, Michaela. Um, can you help us read this passage? Okay. Only the flood began to go down. Once the flood began to go down, the river and the little creeks that flood, it, it dropped rapidly. Actually, actually, I had, I had Ajax for only two days when my father decided that it would be safe to begin the trick, trick trek. home. Trek home. So we packed up every we packed up everything once again and started off home. I I holding I holding Ajax on my knees on my knee, the other two dogs sitting jealously. Um Algy at my feet, Benny on the seat between Lewis and me. It wasn't at all a pleasant drive. There was only there were only patches of dry wood, and all sorts of things were were hidden in the watery holes and pools and pools, logs and washed and washed away earth. I had my work cut out trying to hold on to all three dogs as we went bumping along. When we reached the home the homestead we the homestead we found it in a terrible mess of mud and rubbish but safe. An appalling smell hung over everything. The river had risen to nearly a meter high in the house and the floors were half a meter deep in smelly mud and dead quarries, but not all of them were dead either. Everyone worked at, sh worked at shoveling the mud out until hoses could be put in. Finally, it was pretty clean and but it stayed damp and beastly for days. And as for the garden, it was absolutely ruined. In the end, the river mud did it a lot of good. The way the, that the overflowing Nile feeds the crops, but nearly everything had to be planted. Great. Let's continue. Ajax grew stronger every day, and soon he could lap up his milk, and then yeah, and then his yellow eyes would narrow to slits of a city. Yes. As he drank, as he drank, once he got a little larger and stronger on his legs. Algy longed to play with him. He would, he would bowl the pup over and rush and push, and push him along with his nose. While Ajax, Ajax went on with frenzy, with friends, friends snapping either? and snoring, friends snapping and snoring. Then Algy blinking at the. Ridiculous, ridiculous pup seemed to shrug his big shoulders and probably gave up the effort. When Ajax snapped at Benny, Benny snapped back at him, and then there was there were such squealings and yelpings of rage on both sides that I had to break. I had to separate them. Okay, thank you, Michaela. Um. Stay on the line with us. 
Um, okay, so we're going to go to number 19. And before I, we go on, I just want to say I'm happy that we did read over the passage. Uh, we, in fact, uh, my error, left out one of the slides there, right, which was essential in answering the passage. So let's go on to number 19. Go ahead and read that for me. You mean on the question? Yes, the, quest the question. From your story, why do you think the family had left their home? Right, and I'm just going to go to that slide for you. Right, and you can probably uh, look through it and then you can give us your answer. The family had left their homes because the flood, because rain was pouring and the river overflowed and water came into their home. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much, Michaela, for all your help. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Bye. So they left because they live near a river and there was going to be a flood and they wanted to be safe. Right. Or so there was a flood actually, and you would notice the language in this um passage is not exactly you know how we would write or in proper or standard english some of the words and phrases right not structured but you have to read it just as it is given and make sense of the writing all right let's go to number 20 let's take a call good evening welcome to see results and let's go to number 20 let's take a call good evening welcome to see hi you're live on see results who am i speaking with hi afternoon hi Reagan. welcome Regan. Uh, yeah. Okay, Regan, uh, can you read number 20 for us? Sure. What two items were used to clean the house? Exit. All right, thank you. Okay, so two items that were used to clean the house are shovels and hoses. Excellent, Regan. Thanks for calling. No problem. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, guys. Um... Two items that were used were shovels and hoses, directly from the passage, as it was a literal question. Let's take another call. Right, I'm going to actually hold on for that call. Let's read the question. In the meantime, write two examples of imagery found, sorry, from the third paragraph. Right, so I'm looking at imagery here, and I, I'm going to hold on for a call here because I want someone to assist me by telling, uh, what, telling us what is imagery. And of course, given examples. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Jane Richard. Nice to have you with us. Uh, can you read this question for us? What, write two examples of imagery from the third paragraph. Right. And I'm going to go to that paragraph. You can take your time and skim it through. Okay, miss. Before you give us the um, answer, can you tell us what is imagery or what do you understand by that? Uh, 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 imagery is something you could, you could think in your mind. You could right. see it in your mind. All right, very good. Go ahead. We, we reached the homestead. We found it in a terrible mess of mud and rubbish. Very good. An yes. appealing smell hung over everything. An appalling smell hung over everything. All right, uh, continue. So the fight. river had risen, had risen to nearly in a meter high in the house. Good. So we the have... The floods were uh, half a meter deep in smelly mud and dead crawly, but not all of them were dead either. Great. So you gave us some examples there of imagery, but I want to ask, um, an appalling smell hung over everything. Do you think that is imagery as well? No. Okay, great. So all the other examples that you provided were actually correct, Okay. Okay, Thank you so much for calling. Right, oh, um, so we have had a couple of examples here in the terrible mess of mud and rubbish, an appalling smell hung over everything. Right, so in fact, um, as I just pointed out, imagery here pointing out to something that you can visualize, an appalling smell hung from over everything here is not actually imagery. The river has risen to nearly half a meter high in the house, and the floors were a meter deep in smelly mud and dead crawlies any of those examples guys would have been correct right but that exception that we pointed out of course and number two how are the crops expected to grow when replanted give a reason for your answer right uh, good evening welcome to see results 
Hi, good evening, Kuala. Good evening. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Jaden. Hi, Jaden. So, um, how are the crops expected to grow when replanted? Right? And what do you understand by this question? That they want to know how the crops will grow when they replant it. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to go to that part of the passage for you. It's not clearly stated, of course. Right? Uh, but the answer is there. I probably refer to the last part of the paragraph from finally. And you can read it aloud if you like for us. Finally, it was pretty clean, but it stayed damp and beastly for days. All right. Um, so before you go on, what do you understand by the word beastly here? Beastly for days. What are they telling us? That it stayed moist or wet. Right, but they gave us wet already. So if something is, we usually use the word beastly. Beastly what? To describe a drink. Cool. Right, so something that stayed damp and cold for days. And I was just pointing out that piece of uh, detail in the writing, okay? You can go ahead read it and ask for. And as for the garden, it was absolutely ruined. In the end, the river mudded. So it's a lot of good. The way that the overflowing Nile feeds the crops, but nearly everything had to be replanted. Right. Um, so before you give us your answer, the way that the overflowing Nile, what, what are they talking about here, do you think? What comes to mind when they say the overflowing Nile? The river? A river, right? Do you know where that river is located? The Nile no River? Mesh. Okay. So you can probably do a little research on that. And I think they're actually referring to the Nile River in Africa here, one of the largest rivers. Right? So they're saying the way that the overflowing Nile feeds the crops. So the question was, how are the crops expected to grow when replanted? So just as um, the crops are, or the comparison here with the overflowing Nile, meaning the river, how it feeds the crops. Right? Um, how do you think those crops are going to be after replanting. They're going to grow better than how it was grown before. Excellent. Right? So they're going to be healthy, um, probably lush, right? Anything along those lines, better even, that's great. So thank you so much for your call. Okay, ma'am. The crops are expected to grow abundantly, great, very good harvest, even plentiful. Right, the story says that the river mud, and that was the second part of the question, my apologies, give a reason for your answer. The story says that the river mud did the garden a lot of good, like the way the overflowing Nile feeds the crops. All right, let's go to number 23. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Regan again, hi. hi. Okay, Regan, go ahead with number 23. Two phrases that appeal to the sense of hearing from this story are... Well, and I'll just read in the little paragraph. Sure, take your time. You could even read it out loud for your audience. Okay, sure. Ajax grew stronger every day, and soon he could lap up his milk. Then his yellow eyes would narrow to slits of ecstasy as he drank. When he got a little larger and stronger on his legs, Algy longed to play with him. He would bowl up, he would bowl the pup over, and push him along with his nose. While Ajax went on with... with while Ajax went on with frenzied snapping and snarling, the algae, the algae blinked at the ridiculous pup. Seemed to shrug his, the ridiculous pup seemed to shrug his big shoulders and probably gave up the effort. When Ajax snapped at Benny, Benny snapped back at him. And then there were two such squealings and yelpings of rage on both sides that I had to separate them. Good. So going back to the question, two phrases that appeal to the sense of hearing hearing from the story are okay so one phrase are the snapping and snarling great and the other is yelpings of rage 
So you are close here. Let's probably read a couple words before. Yeah. Snarling and squealing. Right, excellent. Right, so snappings and snarlings and squealings and yelpings. And yelpings of reach. Excellent. Thank you so much for calling. No problem, bye. Okay, so let's see if we can get a final question and before time is up. Good evening, welcome to see results. Oh. Okay, apparently we're going to still on the line there. Good evening, welcome to see results. Okay. So let's see if we can have a final caller um, before we go, guys. Help us with number 24, but don't worry. When we come back tomorrow for more English language arts, we are going to continue with this passage, of course, and the rest of the paper, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead with number 24, probably read this in the meantime. And great, I have a caller on the line. Good evening. Welcome to series us. Hi, you are, how are you alive on series us? Who am I speaking with? This is Jane Richards again. Nice to have you with us again. So read number 24 for me. Write an example of personification from the story. Right. Before you give me your answer, tell me what is personification. Personification is a human activity given to an object or animal. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to go to the paragraph for you here, and you can skim through for your answer. Okay, ma'am. You can even read out loud for the audience. Okay, ma'am. We, when we reached the homestead, we found it in a terrible mess of mud and rubbish, but see. An appealing smell hung over everything. The river had risen to, to nearly a meter high in the house, and the floors were half in the deep in smelly mud and dead crumbs. But not all of them were dead either. Everyone was at shoveling the mud out until hoses could be put on. Finally, it was pretty clean, and it stayed damp and beakly for days. And as for the garden, it was absolutely ruined. In the end of the in the end of the river, mud did it a, a lot of good. The way that the overflowing Nile feeds the crop, but nearly everything had to be replanted. Right, and did you see an example of personification there? No miss. All right, I'm going to give you a hint there. Read the first uh, two sentences. An appealing smell hung over everything. Right, and it's a little correction, an appalling smell, okay? Yes, ma'am. Right, so that is in fact correct. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome, ma'am. Right, and that's a, that is an example of personification, an appalling smell hung over everything. Right, a smell cannot literally hang over anything. Right, and... Great, so I will give you probably a little bit of homework here. What is the meaning of the word appalling? So those of you uh, with mispronunciation and you're not exactly sure what the word appalling is, make sure you know before we start tomorrow, okay? Because we are going to be starting with question 25. So guys, and don't forget, we have quizzes up on our Edmodo class this week already. Um, those of you who would like to join the Edmodo class, there are three easy steps to follow to join the Edmodo class for both students and parents. Get registered now. Just wait a couple hours maybe to get approved and you will be able to take those quizzes. Right? Um, so guys, stay tuned with us. Tomorrow we have English language arts and expository writing. And I do want to spend a little bit of a little extra time on expository writing tomorrow. Uh, just recapping on that uh, report we had over last week. So probably Reread your report and uh, make sure you have it in front of you. So when we are going through that report tomorrow, you know, you can uh, or will be able to point at some of the errors that you made and how to improve on those errors, right? So that will be a uh, benefit to you, of course. So if you reread re your report and have it in front of you, even better, right? Um, so make sure and join us tomorrow for some more C results. So I do hope you have a wonderful evening, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening.